two, one, and we are officially live. All right, it's Mike Wall back again with another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast, where we deconstruct some of the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent so they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. I'm super stoked today, man. I got my guys, Rory Pitts and Luke Weaver from the state of Washington. We're going to be talking about partnerships, and this one is near and dear to my heart. Um, I have a couple of different businesses, and um, in each one of those businesses, I have a partner. And so um, partnerships, I, I said in the um, I said in the comments initially to advertise or to market the podcast that, you know, you, a lot of times you hear, you know, podcasts or partnerships, it's like, you know, th those are sinking ships, right? We've heard all the negative things, but I've always heard really good things about partnerships and experienced really good things about partnerships because I know alone we go fast, together we go far, right? And we've all heard that. And so I'll be interested to dive into this with you all because you both are doing that at a very high level there in Washington. Uh, but before we dive into that, um, Luke, why don't we start with you, man? Tell me a little bit about your background, how you got to where you're at right now, the whole real estate background story. Just lucked right into it, man. Woke up one morning and yeah, surprised. Uh, gosh, That's what so happened to us all, right? Yeah. I just, <laughs> just kept spinning my wheels and eventually something good happened. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I, um, gosh, I was in the Marine Corps for four years and I got out and uh, I was kind of like, what do I do now? And before I'd gone, I, I didn't go to the Marine Corps until I was 21. So I had like this, you know, time of work. And one thing I was always really good at was sales, and, but I didn't want to do sales. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, I, I'm good at it, but I don't want to do it. Um, but of course, I, I got a really good job offer in an industrial sales company and just took off with it, was making great money and setting all kinds of sales records and, and doing well. And but I got discouraged, um, to be honest, after about three years, um, the, the economy was tanking. Um, this is like 2008, 2009 okay. economy's tanking. And I didn't like the company response. So I was a sales manager at this point. I was managing a territory and they were starting to take away benefits that my my, you know, my outside sales reps had and things that they counted on for themselves and their families and kind of a response to what was going on. And I was just like, I think you're doing the opposite of what you should be doing. We're not taking care of our own people here. And um, so I left and I had been, I had got my real estate license kind of on the side and had said it was something I always wanted to do. I had family in it, my grandfather, my uncle, my dad had dabbled and I'm kind of um, a knee jerk. I just kind of react to things. And I kind of had a straw that broke the camel's back one day. And um, I, I literally, my RVP and I had it out and I said, you know what? I'm done, man. I'm just, I don't like what you're getting, how you're treating people, what's going on. This isn't how, what I want to be known for. You're making me do all the, the dirty work. And so I bailed and um, I called my wife. I said, hey, I left. It's full on into real estate. And she said, that's awesome. How do you feel? And I'm like, I, I'm fired up. And she's like, that's me too. Um, Christmas is in nine days. And I was <laughs> like... Vacation oh, starts early. <laughs> I don't know what day it was. <laughs> yeah. So it was, um, hey, man, it was, I'll, I'll, I'll love with you. It was tough. I, I went into a Windermere office out here, which is a big deal. In the, Windermere is a big deal on the West Coast. And I remember sitting down with my broker and he's stressed. Economy's tanking. And he's like, look, uh, here's a desk. Best of luck. And if you can figure out how to do it now, you should be good. And uh, I'm like, okay. And so I literally just tried to suck information wherever I could from anybody who was willing yeah. to give it to me. I worked some part-time gigs for, you know, a couple of years while I was trying to make ends meet and, and get through things. And um, I have, luckily for me, I do have an education. So I taught a little um, high school and, you know, pay some bills and I figured it out. You know, I just started figuring out what worked for me. And I, I realized that what worked for Rory or, or Mike or whoever doesn't necessarily work for me, but I can use what they're doing to tailor it to my niche and everything else. And the biggest thing on top of it all was I just realized along the way that, you know, early on when I first got my license, I was like, yeah, man, close a deal, put 10 grand in your pocket. This is walk in the park, you know? And um, I realized that there was, it, it really reminded me there's no substitute for hard work. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you, you have to, even if you don't know the direction you're necessarily going, you have to start yeah. in a direction. And it, you know, it paid off in the long run. And I, you know, I call my old boss at my first brokers from time to time. I said, well, I figured out how to do it then, man. So I'm doing pretty good now. Yeah. yeah. That's where I'm at. You know, that's so interesting, man, because I think the big myth sometimes is that, you know, and, and I think society all 
they all push you in a direction to get a job with a you know a Fortune 500 company, right? Where you have benefits and and the reality of it is like that's more risky than working for yourself because like you no longer you when once you commit to working for a company, you no longer have control over what happens oh, to you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that was huge for me. I know, you know, I'm a I got four kids, you know, and at the time when I first got in, I just had the two. But I knew one thing was is that I wanted to control my life and control the dad, I, the father I was, the husband I was. And when you're working for those big companies or, or whoever, you, you don't have any control over that. Right. You know, not for at least a certain chunk of your week every week. Um, and, and that was a huge deal for me. And having control over who I get to be as a father and a husband and you know a friend or a person is a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. Awesome, man. Awesome. Rory, what about you, man? Well, the thing was, I got into this uh, because I was a consumer at one point and our family, we moved to Puyallup in 2006. We sold our, our house in Port Orchard. We made a killing on it. Yeah. Uh, we paid off all of our debts. We walked into Puyallup with $30,000 in our hand. And between the, between the real estate agent that we had and the lender that we had, we got ourselves into a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And so about a year or so after that, I thought, well, I want to get into real estate because there's money to be made here, but I don't want to get my license. I want to, I want to somehow finagle it and not have to get my license. And that business venture cost me a lot of money. And so at that point I went, fine, that's it. I'm done with real estate. Not going to do anything with it. Made, I promised my wife I wasn't going to go back into real estate. And, um, and it wasn't until about probably 2012, 2013 that, um, I, I was I was at one career, completely shifted careers, went back to school. Uh, I was working in the tech field at the time. And I just I, there was a ceiling where I was working at as to how much money I could make. And my son, who is uh, he's 20 years old but at the time, he was 15. He's running circles around me with technology. <laughs> yeah. And it's not that I it's not that I don't care. I just don't care to learn the, the in-depthness of technology anymore. Right. And, and so he, you know, he's like, I can reprogram your phone. I can do this. I can make this happen. And I'm like, I, I just want it to work. I just want to get onto Facebook. I don't. So at that point, I, I had blown a lot of my, my, uh, my retirement. Yeah. I had gotten into a career that was going nowhere. I had gotten my degree, bachelor's degree that wasn't doing anything for me. And I thought, well, shoot, I have to rebuild myself. I have to rebuild our family. I have to rebuild everything. There's a good chance I have to work into my 60s and heaven forbid my 70s. What could I do if I have to keep on working into my old age? And I thought, you know what? I can I can do real estate. What if I was to go back, get my license, do it the right way yeah. and build a career doing it that way? And so that's what I did. I got my license in 2014. I did it part time while I was working still full time at the, the computer job. And it was probably about uh, February of 2015 where I sat down with my wife and I said, you know what, if I'm going to do this and if it's going to work, I'm going to have to take a leap of faith. We're already kind of in a pinch as it is financially. Can't really get much worse off than we are. Um, what do you think? And she's <laughs> kind of like his, his wife reaction. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, I joined my, my, my experience is a little bit different from Luke's where I was a solo agent for a little bit, but then I joined a team, did the team thing for about two, two and a half years uh, and then went out on my own. And then in 2018, I uh, hooked up with this big galoot and formed to home homes Northwest. Now I know we're eventually going to get into talking about the partnership, yeah. uh, but what a lot of, well, I guess I, I guess this isn't a fact anymore, but I was going to say what a lot of people don't know is that uh, Luke and I grew up together and Luke okay. is four years younger than me. So he actually graduated with my little brother. And um, there was a time where I would push this guy around and pick on him and uh, all that good stuff. Those times were behind us. Oh, those, those times were behind us. <laughs> yeah. He decided to have a growth spurt and uh, then he became a Marine. And so it's like, yeah, I'm not going to pick on you anymore. Yeah. So, But that's kind of my experience of getting- The tables ready. have turned. All yeah. oh, this they have. Uh, but it was basically a bad experience back in 2006 where someone didn't have, didn't give us the recommendations, didn't have our best interest in mind. And I thought to myself, if someone can screw up a transaction and still make that much money, what would happen if I started building relationships with people and made that much money? 
And, and mm-hmm. so that's, that was the main reason that's the catalyst that got me to get into real estate. Man, great story. So I, here's what I want to know. Okay. So obviously you guys have partnered and um, I have a residential real estate business and I have a partner in that business and I have an investment business and I have a partner in that business who's different from the residential real estate partner. Um, and I know that um, to, going into a partnership is not something that you ever want to take lightly. It's very important that you know and that you trust that person, um, that you are you share the same morals, that you your vision is in alignment. Um, and, and so I want to talk about that specifically for you guys. Um, and, and you guys can both take this and, 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 and talk, I guess, look through your lens. But Luke, why don't we start with you, man? When you how did this partnership looking through your lens, how did this partnership come about and how did you know Rory was the right person? Oh gosh. Just, yeah. this is, this is being recorded. Yeah. So I will use this against you in a court of law. <laughs> just the way he, <laughs> just the way he looked across the table at me. Um, yeah. With that nod and that wink. Yeah. <laughs> sold it with the beard. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, it's funny because there's, there wasn't a lot of it. You know, people talk about this all the time and I, I, I truly believe that like things happen for a reason. And like, you know, throughout the day, like we're constantly bumping into people, you know, through our lives, e- experiencing new relationships, you know, some much longer than others and for reasons or seasons or whatever that is. Um, and, you know, we kind of latch on to people that we feel one can benefit our lives and we can benefit their lives or, or whatever that case is. And, you know, that you have a mutual benefit to. And, the one thing with with Rory is that, like, yeah, we did grow up together, but we didn't like know each other very well. Like, I knew his brother, and we hung around and and, and all that. But um, it wasn't until he was in real estate and I was in real estate um, that we started to kind of form a friendship, and it was more revolved around. Yeah, we both lived in Puyallup. We both came from the small town, the same small town. You know, it was someone that we could kind of identify with. I didn't set out with the idea of I need to go find a partner, um, but I've always been open to the idea that, you know, certain things happen in life uh, and, and you have to be able to recognize things and you're just drawn to certain people. Rory and I had both gotten to a point in our real estate where we were both doing well. And I had gotten to a, a point at times where like I was doing well enough that I was frustrated at times. It was like, do I hire somebody? What do I do? I kind of had a breaking point one year when I was at a, a Christmas festival and a bunch of stuff went haywire and I had to leave my family to get outside of town where I could get a better cell phone signal because we we're out in the mountains. Yeah. And um, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. And so Rory and I would sit down and have coffee and just kind of, you know, shoot the breeze. What's working, what's not working, catch up a little bit, how are families, that kind of a deal. And uh, right at the beginning of January 18, we had decided to get together and we were talking and the one thing I had known, I was getting with Rory because I'm miserable at social media and like marketing and that aspect. Like, and he's, that's his, that's his bag, you know? And um, I actually had told him, I said, Hey, let's get coffee. And I wanted to pick his brain a little bit on what he was doing um, and how he was doing it because it's just such a drag for me. And, um, and we started talking about that and we just started talking about some other things. And then he started picking my brain on some things. It was kind of like, to be honest with you, it was kind of like that stepbrothers, you know, like, did we just become best friends? Um, <laughs> and uh, did we just become partners? Yeah. Um, and it just came uh, across so organically. And it just felt that like from all of our meetings and then that specific time, it was like, dude, we have so much, I think that we could offer the other that the other doesn't necessarily possess in a skill set or in a nature um, that I think we could really benefit each other. And so we talked about it a little bit that day. And then we talked about it individually, him with his wife and my, and me with mine. Um, and then we all got together as a family, um, over at my house and broke some bread and talked about it. And we, I, I think we had decided we wanted to give it a run, but we wanted to make it, um, we just, we wanted to make it, um, as easy as possible. And so we had sat down with a mentor, um, of ours at our office who had been in partnerships and we're like, yeah, we're trying to figure it out. Like if I bring it to the table, do I make 60 or 70% and he only makes whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he just stopped us and he was like, guys, knock it off. You're going to make it. It's going to end up being difficult, more difficult, the longer you're together. Yeah. And, um, and so he was like, just 50, 50, you're done. Walk away. It puts the onus on both of you to work hard. It puts the onus on both of you to help the other with the transaction. Um, and so we thought about it. And we talked about it and we're like, yeah, 
let's do this. And I think from the beginning, the reason why I knew it would work with Rory was that um, not only values, um, you know, both family men, you know, great pride in being husbands and fathers and, um, and all that. And, and there was all that there. But we also d- talked right from the beginning that like, I'm a pretty blunt dude. And, and, and Rory can be the same way. And we had to realize that like, there were going to be times that we were going to piss the other off and we had yeah. to be okay with that. And there had, and we had to realize that like, I don't know how many times that one of us has heard the other one say to each other, like, dude, I'm coming at you with love. <laughs> and, and the moment someone says that it's like, getting the, you know, like hey, we need to see you in the principal's office. It's like, crap, what did I do? Yeah. Um, but it's being able to take that, you know, and, and there's definitely been times where, you know, he's like, Hey man, uh, this is from love. And then he says something, I'm like, I, I hate your face. I don't want to see you for a few days, you know, and I go down, like, and then eventually, uh, Hey bro. Um, and so I think that was a big thing for me is like, we had to know that, uh, I had to know he was going to work as hard as I would work. Um, and I knew he needed that the same values as far as our families and go, because I know that he, at the end of the day, cares about my kids and my wife and that we're doing good things for them. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, the same for him. Yeah. Um, and it had to be somebody that I knew that we could have the tough conversations with yeah. and we could get over that um, too, time, too often. And look, you're talking to a guy like, look, and I was, a, you know, I was a college athlete and, and, a, and a Marine and I got an ego. Don't, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I don't have an ego. Um, but he, I knew that I had to be willing to put that aside and I had to be with somebody else. If I was going to have a partnership, it had to be with someone else who could do the same. Um, yeah. and so far it's been great. That's awesome, man. A uh, couple things I heard there, and, and I think they're worth repeating, um, is the fact that you, you got to a point to where you were frustrated in your business and you knew that you had some holes to fill yeah. and you thought the most important holes to fill were leveraging those places that you're weak. And yeah. I, I think that if anything's worth writing down, that's worth writing down because you don't necessarily, when you're vetting a partner, I I don't know that it would necessarily behoove you to uh, partner with somebody that is, has the exact same strengths that you do, you know? Right. Exactly. And so I think, I think that that's, that, that's very um, enlightening that, you know, you noticed that early on and that, those are the holes you filled in because you're right. I mean, you guys grew up together in a sense, but you were more acquaintances than you were friends. So, right. I mean, you have, I'm pretty sure a big network. It just so happened that, you know, your, your past crossed and he was that perfect person to fill in those strengths. And yeah. so Rory, look, tell me the story through your lens then, like where were you at in your business when you knew it was a good idea to partner with Luke? Well, it, it's kind of funny because I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And it just so happened that we had made this appointment to go grab coffee like a day or two before. Um, as as I can attest, I'm a very appointment person. He's a very fly by the seat of his pants kind of person. So obviously putting it on the calendar was uh, was a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. Um, if but- we're going to talk about calendars, I'm out of here. <laughs> We're done. We're going to talk about your TPS cover sheets. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but the thing was, is that morning before I left the house, I received an email and it was just like a daily email or weekly email. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But it just so happened this email was talking about partnerships, great partnerships in history. And you've got uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. You've got Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Um, you've got the, the, the partners at Google. Almost every partnership out there or every great business has been from a partnership. And this article was talking about how everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. And so I actually, this was resonating with me as I was getting ready, leaving the house, heading over to the, to the office. And, and as we're walking over to Starbucks, he's sharing with me some of the struggles and some of the things he's trying to do in 2018. This is before we even sit down. And it's in this walk that I start thinking to myself, I should bring up this article. I should talk to him about this because some of the things that he's struggling with right now, yeah. I'm either I'm either having the same struggles or I can solve those struggles for him. And it would it would be super easy for me. And the struggles that I'm about ready to share with him, I know that he would be really good at. And so we sat down, I shared that article with him, and I and and it just kind of like he said, it just kind of came organically. And um and so when you Lord, when you shared that, were you already in the mindset that I think I think we should partner? Were you already thinking that? I was in the mindset that uh, I, I think I was I, I was open to the idea. Yeah, okay. um, because I had just I had just left Keller Williams 
six, eight months before that, and I was on a team, I wasn't sure if I was ready to jump into another team like situation. Right. Right. And, you know, it just, it just so happens that this is not a team like situation. This is a completely different setup that we have here. Um, and, you know, when we met with that mentor that he talked about and, and the guy said, boy, it's 50, 50, it's that simple. It, it really opened up my eyes and it has really created a competition between the two of us, which has been extremely healthy. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually looking at our numbers last night and I was looking at our closings and it's beautiful to see that Luke will run on a hot streak and then he goes cold. And when he goes cold, I'm on a hot streak. Yeah. And one of the one of the ideas I had in my head when I first brought this idea to him was that that helps keep the entire year somewhat stable instead of the big ups and downs. If one of us is busy and the other one's cold, you know, you've got that you've you've got that balance there. Now, obviously, it would suck if we're both cold. It would be absolutely awesome if we're both hot. Yeah. And so then I looked at how many closings we've had this year. And I'm ahead of him until next week. And then we're tied again. <laughs> so that it's, it's been a very healthy competition. And I know when I tell him, Hey, I've got three in escrow right now. I know he's cussing on the other side. And the same thing happens to me when he says, Oh, I got four in escrow. I'm like, son of a, no, I'm working extra hours. He can't be, he can't have more than me. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a healthy relationship that only benefits our families. And that's yeah. what I love about this, this partnership. So talk to me about how is the, like, what does your partnership look like? Is it, is it just you two? Is it you two and a TC? Is it you two and a TC and agents? Like, what does that look like and where is it going? Uh, gosh, um, it's funny you bring that up. I was, when we first sat down to come up with this whole thing, my wife is an engineer and, and a lender and she's very numbers oriented, very numbers oriented. She's highly competitive. Uh, she played college fast pitch, University of Missouri, like everything's a competition. And, um, she was the one that was probably the most hesitant about everything because I think she was just like, oh, you guys are going to screw off. She's like the mother, <laughs> you know, she's like, oh, you guys are just going to drive too fast and get in trouble and get speaking tickets and whatever. Yeah. And so um, she said, well, you need some way to measure if this is successful. And her point was, and, and this isn't against her at all. It's just the way she thinks is growth year to year transaction, you know, volume, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I think that the one thing, too, that none of us really could take into account was is we also need to be measuring success by the level of stress we're reducing from our lives that makes us more available to our families. And great more point. Yeah. Great and, point. and I think that for me in the last year, I've measured success more and like, look, dude, if, if, if we do the same amount of transactions this year as we did as this year as we did last year and we don't necessarily or even less and we don't see the vertical growth or whatever. But. I'm less stressed and more happy doing it because, um, you know, we're shouldering the burden and there's, you know, more of us to go around. I think that's a measure of success for me. And that's been a definite measure of success this last while for both of us, I think. Um, and along the way, it's been it's allowed us to Rory's a little bit more of the shiny object like he's Dorian. Um, He's he's Dory and Finding Nemo. You know? I'm getting better. I'm he's getting, getting better. much better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a shiny object guy in my personal life. I'm like, oh, big screen TV. But at work, I'm like, oh, I'm not any money because that's money I could buy the big screen TV with. Yeah. So, um, and, and yeah, he's definitely getting better. And so there's been a lot of times in the last year and a half where he's like, hey, I want to spend money on this. I want to spend money on that. I'm like, eh. you know, we kind of kibosh it. Um, where he's got me in the last little while is we've actually. I haven't wanted to hire a personal transaction coordinator. I'm like, yes. these are things that we can do on our own. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I, I, and, and to be honest, like I like to have control over it. Um, it to know it's being done the way it needs to be done. So I don't get in trouble. Um, and we're, you know, our, you know, if an audit happens, it's on us, um, anything like that. And so I never wanted to, whereas he was kind of pushing it. Um, but thankfully he did continue to push in other areas. And what I have found is that he, he pushed on a group called Acquire Marketing out of Puyallup here. Um, for anybody who watches out here, Acquire Marketing is amazing. And I was very hesitant. And I finally said, okay, let's give it a run. And we have, and it's been incredible. And it's taken this entire load off our plate that we didn't, that we were putting on ourselves before, um, as far as taking care of our clients, our past clients, possible clients, referrals, all this kind of stuff, our whole database. They handle for us for, no, you know, not that much money, to be quite honest. Um, and adding those tools in so not necessarily the transaction coordinator but that a lot of people want to hire yeah. but 
when it's when it's something like a transaction that I can do myself and I can do a good job at it, I don't see I don't see value in hiring someone else to do it. And they might not as do a good job as we do. Yeah. But what I've learned is like those areas that like we can hire a professional, like someone who can really kill it at that job, then let's allow that to come off our plate. They can do a better job than we can, you know, and it saves us time, effort. Yeah, we spend a little bit of money, but now we can we can allocate our time somewhere else, whether it be in the business or at home. And um, so doing those things, finding the areas that is not necessarily our strong points yeah. and finding a way to hire that out or contract that out, but still keep in control of the things that I think we can do a better job at. Or, has been, or, or partner with them, much like, yeah. you, like you did. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Partner <laughs> with them. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. And yeah. it's um, and so that's I think where we've grown the most is just as we looked at each other and said, hey, what can you offer this group that we that I can't um, is to look outside our our group now and say, OK, where can we find someone who can offer value to us that we don't necessarily aren't the strongest at? Yeah. Um, and that's been great. And I think as we go forward, for me, that's the areas I want to look at. We're, we're now looking at doing a bookkeeper because we're both tired of trying to keep up with stuff and I'm miserable at it. And he has to hit me up for receipts and all this. Whereas if we hire that out and we take that off our plate and it's one less thing, but keeping in control of the things that we should be doing on our own or that we can do a better job at. And I think as we go down the road, that's that's where I see it going. It's continue to fill the holes that we may have um, yeah. with people who do a great job and can provide value. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a, that's a great answer, man. And what what I'm hearing without hearing it from you is that um and and, and this isn't breaking news, but the your happiness, your happiness is not measured by the number of transactions you do or the amount of money you make. It's right. getting to a place in your business where there's balance. I, I mean, quote unquote balance. Yeah. Right? Like you're giving the proper amount of time to your family. You're giving the proper amount of time to your work. You're giving the proper amount of time to your relationships and friendships. Right. Yeah. And you're giving the proper amount of time to your faith. If you know if that's something that's yeah. that's important to you. And it's it's really being able to check all those boxes. That's where that's where you can find some peace of mind, some some happiness. And and I think that, you know, it's not out like I used to be on this, they call it the transaction treadmill, right? It's like, you know, okay, we did 300 deals last year. We got to do 400 this year. Like, and it's like, man, you that's that's no way to live your life because that 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 is that is putting a measurement, that is putting an if this, then that measurement on happiness. In yeah. other words, if I hit 400 transactions, then I'll be happy. If I hit $2 million in GCI, then I'll be happy. So you'll, and the reality of it is you'll never be happy if that's the kind of life that you live because you'll always set another measure that takes you back to the place you were. Oh, that's, and that's spot on. And I think, you know, Rory would tell you the same as I, I think for me, um, you know, in the, when I was in the Marine Corps, one of our mottos is work hard, play hard. And I definitely brought that into this partnership with him. And I, t I, one thing I noticed with him in our first few months, I'm like, dude, when's the last time you went somewhere with the family, like vacation, like he'd been just pounding it. And, um, and I'm a play hard kind of a guy, like give me an opportunity to, you know, play hooky and I, and I will. Um, <laughs> and so, but I will say in the last year, because we've been smart about where we put things, I've probably not been as happy as I am in my personal life in the last year or in the last five years as I have been in the last year. Like, you know, I've grabbed the family. We've gone to Idaho for vacation in Hawaii, in Mexico and, you know, or just have three or four days in a row where I don't do much. You know, I'm just running kids around. Or I'm, you know, coaching basketball or, or at my kids youth group helping out. And he's doing the same thing, you know, going to concerts with his kids and, you know, spending time with the in-laws and whatever, going on vacations. And I think that because of the things that we've put in place, it's giving us that balance. Right. And yeah. so at the end of the year, like, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea where we're at transactions and volume wise. Um, I haven't looked at it really all year. I know that we continue to support our lifestyle and, yeah are happy doing so. And the great thing too, is that uh, for him and I, is that there's no point of like jealousy ever or, and I don't know where that comes from, to be honest with you. But if when there's days where I'm like, this dude hasn't done anything for like three or four days, like I kind of laugh about it. I'm like, but dude, he's, he's chilling at home, you know, hanging with the family, doing whatever, visiting his daughter at college. And that's exactly what he should be doing. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're working to do more of. And so it's, that's it. You know, yeah. the 300 transactions or 400 transactions, none of it matters at the end of the day if you're not happy when you go home. Right, so. right, right, man. Yeah. And I think one key thing is, is that um, the 
finding the finding the people like acquire marketing and I, we're not getting paid a spiff to say their name multiple times. I just yeah. we're um, working on it. Yeah, but. we're working on that. Uh, <laughs> something like acquire marketing. We have big hearts. We we love to love on our sphere. The problem is is sometimes we get we get so uh, distracted that we yeah. forget things and it in it honestly it pisses us off when we forget a birthday or we forget an anniversary. And so one of the things with acquire is they help us with that. Yeah. Um, the goal is to, like he said, take people that are very good at that kind of stuff and leverage their experience to help us grow our business. Because mm -hmm. ultimately what, what we would like to do and the, and I'm now going to start plugging EXP. So if you're not with EXP, you need to be <laughs> with EXP um, with the, with the EXP model it allows us to not only go out there and get try and get real estate business, but also start attracting agents to a better way of doing business. Mm -hmm. And our model or our goal, our, our vision is that in the next two to three years, we get to a point where we've got some of that revenue share coming in that's helping supplement our monthly income. And we've got enough uh, buyers coming in or sellers coming in that we can start feeding our people underneath us because if we can get them to win then it benefits everybody else and i think that's uh, i was talking i was actually talking to somebody yesterday about this and the thing is is i want to get to a point where we've got so many transactions in escrow that we can start saying hey you know what i'm gonna have you meet with so and so i'm gonna be here so if you ever have any questions you know don't hesitate to reach out to me or reach out to luke but this person is going to be running point and they're going to help you find the house that you're looking for mm -hmm. and if we can get this person right here to get educated and get the experience and get everything then they'll start taking off in their business and it just helps everybody yeah. and, and and i think ultimately that's where our big hearts are at is we want we want as many people to be a part of this to yeah. succeed yeah. and uh you know we lost we've lost one agent in the past year and it, it's frustrating. And, it, you know, we look back at it. We've talked about it. And really, there's some things that we could have done differently. But ultimately, it, that, that stuff's going to happen. Um, it's going to come down to that particular agent and how they're going to want to grow their business. Do they have that fire? Yeah. And those agents that do have that fire, those are the agents that we want to start helping build up their business. And so long-winded answer. I love the direction that we're going. I'm I, I really enjoyed our partnership at our last brokerage. I love our partnership at this brokerage. Yeah. 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 That's a great, that's a great answer, man. And, and the, 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 to your point, it's like people, like when I call people and they're like, you know, um, you know, we're happy where we're at. It's like, well, that's great. You know, I'm, I'm, we, we, we really are. We're looking for happy people. I was happy right. when I left, you know, Keller Williams, I was ecstatic. We were having, actually we had our best year ever. Um, that last year when we left Keller Williams and, and we wanted to yeah. continue that at a, what we thought was a better platform. So the reality of it is it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to make this all about an EXP recruiting event, but the, I, I love the fact that you're passionate about um, your move and what you're doing now, because you understand not only is it a better platform for you, but it's a better platform for the people that, you know, that you're interested in bringing over and talking to and that you, you're not just, singing the praises, but you actually believe that when you make that phone call or have that meeting. And that's a great point because I've been at two other brokerages before and I can tell you that I brought over zero agents to those brokerages for one reason or another. But like Luke had mentioned before we jumped on here today, he was mentioned, he was meeting with two, two agents and the love that we have for talking to these agents now, it's something completely different. Like there's an agent that we brought on last week. I did one transaction with her in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, but to hear where she was at and to hear the struggles that she was going through, I I, I feel like this this um, I can't even, this this force, this strength to help her succeed here. I don't I don't want to hear that there's agents out there that are struggling. Yeah. And if there's an agent out there that that is looking for that lifeline, there's somebody out there that wants to help you. Well, and you know. <clears throat> Since we're going down this road, yeah, go down this road. The greatest, yep. um, <laughs> and he's talking about his agent, the, the agent that he brought on yesterday. Look, he brought he brought Tammy on, Tammy uh, Tammy Montevideo. She's awesome, and 
you know, Rory technically came in under me and Tammy came in under Rory, right? And so here's the thing though, like he's talking about having a big heart is that I've always, I have a hard time saying no, man. Like I have a hard time saying no, like for as big and as scary as I can appear sometimes, like if you need something and you ask me, like I'm 10, you know, nine times out of 10, you're going to get yes. And that's why I, I'm always at youth groups and coaching teams and doing whatever and stretching myself thin. The, you know, and even with agents in the last 10 years, helping them out when I could or, or taking time out of my own schedule. Now to be in a position where, and, and, and you're not helping them for the financial gain, but to help them out and then it profits everybody. Right, it, right. it just makes it so much easier, right? And you, and you feel so much like you're made, like you can make your time available without costing you. And, you know, Tammy, you know, part of our thing with Roy and I, you know, Roy's a mentor with EXP and yeah. he's, got a bunch of people that he mentors and I am not a licensed mentor, but these people call me all the time. And just like last night, Tammy just got an EXP yesterday. She was writing a land deal last night. She hadn't written a land deal in a while. She called me and I walked her through, through a land deal. And, um, but being able to step away for a second from what I was doing, help Tammy and then hear her sigh of relief. Um, it's like, wow, that's great. You know, and then to put the phone down and be like, cool. You know, I feel good for Tammy and then be like, Hey, if she gets that deal, <laughs> <laughs> So um, I, yeah, that, I think, too, for me, like I'm always going to help agents. That's always how I've been. I'm always, I like to see other people succeed as much as I want to succeed myself. And so now having a venue to not only help them succeed, but it, it helps me succeed along the way. What a beautiful thing. It's changed my mentality. And, and I'll be quite frank. It, it, many, many transactions in the past. It's like we do the deal. We're, we're professionals. We'll get the deal done. We're closing. We got the recording numbers. OK, you go your way. I'll go my way. And since I've joined EXP, my entire mentality of working with agents has completely changed to the point where after we're done with the deal, I'm inviting them out to coffee. Now, the thing is, is obviously EXP is going to come up. It's an organic thing. I actually had coffee with somebody six weeks ago, did a transaction with her, fantastic transaction. We got to the end of our coffee date and she looked at me and she's like, are you going to talk to me about EXP? And I said, that's what you were waiting for, weren't you? I said, no, if you don't want to talk about it, we're not going to talk about it. I just wanted to get to know you better and, you, you know, let's build that relationship. Let's build that collaboration yeah. because ultimately, what, what is it that our, our mentor Greg says? They're eventually going to come over. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell that to my team every week. It's like everyone's coming. It's just a matter of when and through who. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and that's another place I think the partnership uh, helps a lot. You know, there's a lot of times Rory's doing stuff and I'll meet with people or whatever, or we do a two on one and people see how we work and um, how easy we make it for the other one. And, yeah, you know, it, it works out great. So I, I think that happens in a lot more ways than just our transactions and our real estate business is, you know, how the partnership extends. Um to agent attraction and, and even in just into life. Like, I, I don't know. I, I have a, I know there's been a lot, there's been partners out there that don't necessarily get along, but they can't be that happy with the whole overall of it. Um, you know, and, you know, the fact that I'm vested in him and his family and, and he and mine, it's, um, you know, it's a big deal. So if I, if, if I suck, then it hurts his family, you know, if I'm not holding, pulling my weight and that's not okay. So, you know, I think you definitely need to find a partner that you're vested in that you care about. Yeah, it's it's a great point, man. And it just makes me think that, you know, what life is in reality um, is it's a bunch of little partnerships, man. That's what relationships are, man. You know what I mean? Right. And so yeah. and so it's no different it really in business that I mean, those same things have to be in place to create a good partnership. And yeah. what's what's great about, you know, the EXP model is that, you know, it's putting together people or partnerships, and it's giving you a reason to help them get to where they want to go, and everybody wins. And there's right. never ever been a model like it. There's not mm -hmm. been a model like this one at that that that's been done at this level. And that's what I think is so special about it because it really is changing agents' financial lives. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it absolutely is, and it's. You know, we said it. You know, we were in EXP. We showed up on the video screen up there, and it was talking about what we like most about. Um, about EXP and it's not only it's changing agents lives, it's changing the entire nature of a transaction. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I've always said like, I don't ever want to, you know, my job or, or my goal is not go out there and beat up the other side so bad that, you know, they want to climb into the fetal position when they're done, um, when the whole thing's over and, and they yeah. feel like they got took. But 
make sure everyone feels like they got as much as they could and happy with the outcome, you know, but usually it's just, you know, get the transaction done, you're done. It's changed the entire nature of the conversation with the other side, I think. Yeah. Um, and I've said that for a long time now. Um, and it's not just about the recruiting game, but I, I just see what we do over here and how, and how it works. Um, and I want other people to know about that, you know? Yeah. And so it, it definitely like to your point, Mike, it's, it's completely changed things for the better for agents and it's giving agents more opportunities to support their family and yeah. more opportunities to, to fund their lifestyle and their possible retirement. And, you know, I, it's funny. I came in, gosh, it's been 15 months since we came over and it's funny how little I thought about what am I going to do in 10 years? What am I going to do in 15 years? Uh, when I was at, you know, where we were at before compared to now. And I like, I'm meeting with these agents today. And I'm like, look, I'm not just vested in what you're doing right now. I'm vested in what you're going to do in 10 years. When right. you want to hang your, you know, when you want to hang up your Iki and call it a day, like yeah. let's build something for you. Let's build a legacy. And there's, like you just said, there's never been a company that's cared enough about its agents to help, to want to look into their future and say, Hey, how can we not make you just great now, but how can we make, you know, help you live a great life? Yeah. Such a good point. And, and, you know, the other thing is you, you talk about, I mean, agent attraction, that, that's just one piece of it, right? It's, yeah. It was it was definitely a, a, um, a major piece to us making the move. But now I think more more than anything else, the collaboration. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. At this level, I've never seen anything like it. And, I, you know, we you and I, we we probably would have never connected in, in oh, any right. other in any other medium if it weren't for EXP. And what's really cool is like. You, we, we never knew each other before we met at EXP Con and we, we said, you know, let's definitely get on each other's calendar. But like, yeah. every, like through this conversation, we're able to disseminate information like what made your partnership successful, what made my partnership successful and disseminate and disseminate that and deliver that out to the agent community at large. And yeah. we have no expectation. Literally, yeah. we have no expectation. But what's really cool is by helping those agents get the information they need, they're naturally attracted to wanting to be in our circle or learn, learn more about what we're, what we're doing. Right. 100%, man. And that, I had that same conversation this morning with a gal, her, you know, she's over at the big red machine and um, you know, not for nothing. Each office is different. She doesn't feel supported and she's having, you know, all these different kind of issues. And, yeah. um, and it just made me sit there and in my own brain while I'm talking to her quietly in the back corner of my brain housing group somewhere, just be so thankful for the collaboration, the support that we get from each other. I feel way more supported in our environment than I ever did at a brick and mortar. Um, and, yeah. and there's just, so, and I think it's because there are so many mediums that we can, so many platforms that we can connect and reach out to each other on um, that I, I never truly feel like I'm on an island where as I did at, you know, when I was in brick and mortar offices. And yeah. that's just, a, honestly, it's a testament, not only to the leadership team, I think, but just, and I guess it all goes back, but it's the quality and the integrity of the agents that we're working with and that we're, yeah. that we're bringing over and the quality of humans that we're bringing over and, and looking. And that is going to continue to be, um, you know, intrinsic from us to them. Like, you know, we you, you want to bring over agents that you want to work with, that you yeah. want to see succeed and that you have enjoyed doing stuff with. And that's the way we are. I mean, there's definitely been transactions. I'm like, man, I hope I never see that person again. Yep. Um, <laughs> and <happens>. it's, it's, <laughs> And it's just because of, you know, for one reason or another, but we're attracting um, like-minded people. Um, and and hopefully in doing so, we're going to end up building a brokerage that is darn near 100% people who care about other people and want to see everyone succeed together. So, Well, if, um, it, guys, this has been a great show and I could probably talk another hour, hour and a half about this. Oh, yeah, we easily <laughs> could too. I'm really passionate about it and I can tell you guys are too. But if, um, if, if somebody's listening or watching, the show today and and they want to learn more about, you know, how you guys created your partnership or how to get in contact with you to perhaps learn more about EXP yeah. or anything else real estate related. How would you recommend they do that? And Luke, we can uh, start with you. Uh, who are we, who start with? Go ahead. Uh, so you can give me a call 360-362-5162. I'll let him tell you his phone number in a second. You can send him uh, memes all day if you want to. And, and me <laughs> yeah. too, actually. Um, and if uh, you're Rory, that's Rory. <laughs> yep. Uh, Rory at TahomaHomesNorthwest.com. That's uh, like Tacoma, but Tahoma, T-A-H-O-M-A-H-O-M-E-S-N-W.com. Um, all over social media, 
all over social media. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, coffee. You want to bribe us for a good time? Coffee. We'll happily meet you at a coffee shop or, or whatever if you're local. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's really simple. It, it sounds too simple to be true, but it really is that simple. It's 50-50 everything. 50-50 on expenses, 50-50 on commissions, and then just have, have a heart to have, have that healthy competition and want to make the other person's life better. And if, yeah. if that's your formula right there, you can do a partnership too. Yeah. Go figure. They live in Washington and they like coffee. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. There you yeah, go. Yeah. How did that happen? Did Shocking. That happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can reach me, Luke, 360-649-5484. Uh, my email is the same as his, but it's Luke at Tahoma Homes, NW.com. Um, we do have a Facebook page, Tahoma Homes Northwest. We answer that pretty much instantly. Um, if someone reaches out to us there or the same on Instagram, Um yeah. Anybody who wants to reach out anytime, I'd love to, I, I love talking about what we do. Cause I, I really think that aside from everything we talked about, about why it works and, and all that is the simplicity of it. And people sometimes are like, Oh, it can't be that simple. No, it really is. And then we don't have to worry about anything else or like sitting here. And the longer you'd be in business, the more that'd be like, well, whose lead was that? Whose lead was that? Who's, whose fear was that? Like we all work towards the common good. There should be plenty to go around. Um, 50, 50, keep it simple. And, uh, you know, find a partner that uh, you compliment and that you care about and should be just fine. And I guess I should also plug that we do a Facebook live show every Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time. Uh, we're not doing one this Thursday because this Thursday is going to be Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, but normally you can catch these two knuckleheads on Facebook live. We we do about. 2% real estate and 98% everything else. Shenanigans. And yeah. usually we have topics that we start with and the audience is the one who takes the show in a completely different direction. And it's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's awesome. And it's all about just getting our name out there more, but also getting our personalities out there and allows people to see, Hey, I want to do business with these guys, or honestly, I don't want to do business with yeah, these I guys. Wish would stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. So if you get a chance, join us Facebook live Thursday mornings, uh, 10 AM Pacific standard time. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, as usual, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know this show is literally changing agents, financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, Please, 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 please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. If you want to jump on a 30-minute call with me for a free business strategy session, go to the URL meetmikewall.com. And that's it for this one, folks. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Thanks for Mike. having us, man. Yes, sir.